Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will show you the progress of the development of Quantum Espresso user interface. So you see that this is uh, Eclipse and I will write in JavaFX. This is the source code and I have a lot of packages. Let's run it quickly. This is the user interface now. On the top, you see the menu bar and then this is the toolbar. And on the left hand side, there is a tree view showing the hierarchy that I believe here we have a hierarchy from projects to calculation to steps. So for example, if you have a project with silicon and you could have different calculations, for example, density of state or molecular dynamics. And then for density of state, you actually have three to four steps. And the first step is SCF. The second step is NSCF. And the third step is DOS. And the fourth step is partial density of state. And then on, on the right hand side, you have the control panel. Uh, in the middle, you have the workspace. And at the bottom, there is this status bar. Yeah. OK, so we first create a project, press new project here, and then write in a name, for example, silicon. This is a drop down menu listing all projects. And then after you open the project, you see that there is something plotting in the workspace. And now I just plot uh, H2O molecule just for demonstration purpose and that you see that I can rotate and also zoom in and zoom out. Yeah? But I haven't implemented the actual structure. So on the right hand side, you have the geometry tab to so cell, atoms and elements. And this is similar to Burai. And for example, cell, if this is silicon, choose uh, FCC lattice with a lattice constant of 5.4307 Einstrom. Here, the difference is that I only allow one unit here. Yeah? No one will use three units here. That's all for the cell. And for the atoms, actually, we need to, uh, let's say, crystal in the crystal unit. And we need to add atoms. And it's very simple here. You just type in silicon and let's say 0, 0, 0, and add. It will automatically recognize the element here according to the name. And then the second silicon uh, position would be 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25 in the crystal coordinate. And then you add it here. If you want to change the atom position, you could just add here and then say add it. Yeah? And you see this is changed. If you want to relax the structure, you may want to fix one coordinate. That is also easily done. You could fix it and then press add it. It is shown by a yellow background color, which means that it is fixed. And then you just choose it and deselect fix and then add it. It will be free again. So that's how you can add atoms. As I said, I didn't really update the workspace. That's the next thing that I need to do. And then for the elements, it automatically recognizes silicon as the element and the atomic mass to be 28.085. Yeah. Now let's add one calculation. We have a lot of things to uh, choose here. The simple thing would be a single energy calculation, that is the SCF calculation. And for SCF, you only have one step, actually. And you notice that I also put a geometry here, but it's actually read only. Yeah? If you want to change, you need to select geometry here, and then you can change it. So we go to the calculation, and this is the drop-down menu for all of the calculations that is contained in this current project. And now we only have SCF. And let's take a look at logic of SCF. So this is what I designed that you always have standard settings enabled. So you see that those are the parameters that are necessary for SCF. But if you want to add magnetism, you could choose here and then there will be uh, this panel popping up. And for example, we want to use spin polarized calculation and you need to set a starting magnetization. You could do it for each element or do it for each atom. So let's say for each element, we could change the magnetization to be, let's say, one. And then we add it here. Yeah. OK, so this is how it works. And then you could also choose to do DFT plus U calculation. And in this panel, you could uh, turn on the DFT plus U and you could choose which element to plus U. And then, for example, we use five uh, electron volt here and then add. Yeah. If you want to change it, you can change it to three and add it. So I believe that by this way, we keep simplicity as well as control. Yeah. You could have a lot of parameters to play with, but if you want to uh, want simplicity, you want to do a calculation for a simple system, you will only have to set those parameters. Yeah. And to simplify things even more, I implemented this column of checkboxes here that if you click here, 
the left hand side parameter will be disabled and the default value will be used. And if you check here, all of the checkboxes will be enabled and all parameters will be set to the default value except for those that doesn't have a default value that you need to still take care. I haven't implemented this yet. But I think in this way, it allows the user to really focus on those that he needs to pay attention to, but gives him enough flexibility to uh, control the calculation with more parameters if he wants. Yeah? And on the right hand side, there's another column of bottom, which I will implement as the context help explaining the use of each parameter. You see that the logic here is a little bit different than Burai because in Burai all calculations are put in the same folder. But here I believe that I need to keep all calculations independent. For example, we add another optimization calculation and you see that they are actually independent. So if you navigate here, you see that they both contain SCF that are independent. In order not to let the user set the parameters again, I have a choice here to set everything down there as project default. So if you open a new calculation, it will automatically adopt these parameters if that calculation has a step SCF. So basically that's it. And then uh, we could save the current project, for example, here. And then it's successfully saved. And then we close the project and we could load the project. Let's see here. And you see that the geometry is loaded and atoms. Yeah. Okay. So that's all for now. The next step would be to complete the parameters in different calculations here. And then uh, how to generate the input file from those parameters here. And then to add some functionality in this 3D viewing, basically viewing the real structure, design a 3D toolbar here. Then the question is how to run quantum espresso. In the end, I would implement the utilities such as benchmarking, K point, path choosing, and so on. Okay, so this is a brief progress report. And if you have any idea what you would like to change, I'm really happy to read your comment below. And also please leave a like or subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you next time.